My name is Jason Miller, founder of Aspen Now Solutions, we're about to unlock the power of ServiceNow. I'd like to start off by thanking all 4,338 subscribers in over 80 countries globally. If you believe in transferring knowledge to those who need it most, please click subscribe. Your user data will not be transferred to anyone outside of Aspen Now without your express consent. Hey everyone, it's been a while had a lot of stuff going on and my apologies for not posting anything in so many months hope you enjoyed the last video which was our 10 features in quebec today we're going to talk about how to create a custom sla time zone source in quebec so you're probably asking yourself what is the use case well the real use case is that the business owners or leadership if you want to refer to them that way they really want it and if you can't do it, then your credibility is going to be at stake. But the official use case is going to be that out-of-the-box choice is not there on the SLA definition form to support the requirement of having a time zone on something other than the caller or the actual SLA definition itself. So we're going to have one on the actual assignment group. And I'm going to walk you through the steps. You'll see it's really not that hard. However, there are a couple of things here that um, you'll definitely want to um, remember. And if you don't remember it, you can always come back to the video. So we're gonna start out with our SLA definitions. Notice here under service level management, we have our SLA definitions. I type in law def, probably the easiest way to get there. We'll notice two come up that I created. And what we'll notice about these is that they have different, different time zone options. Um, for their time zone source. So we'll notice here this field called time zone source. You know, some people, they overlook this, but basically what this is saying is what on the actual task do we want to use as the time zone? And if you think about it, we can have very different results for um, a task that is based or has a time zone source for, I don't know, something in Japan, for example, versus in California or in Miami. So this is our caller's time zone. Here we have one that I created. This is the assignment group's time zone. And one thing, um, if you look at an out of the box instance or probably in your stack, uh, your PDI, etc., you probably won't have this option here. And this is what we're gonna talk about today is how to get uh, the assignment group's time zone to be displayed in the actual SLA uh, when it fires. So then here's another one out of the box. Uh, this is a response one. It's different than the other two. The other two were resolution SLAs. No real impact on how they function. It's just the, just use this as a kind of a marker or a flag. So we'll fire later on. So the first thing we need to do is we need to create a choice for our time zone source field on our SLA definition table. And how do we do that? Probably the easiest way to do that since you know how to get to the SLA definition at this point is to right click if you're on a PC or two finger click if you're on a Mac like me. And you can click on show choice list. And what that'll do is it'll bring you into the actual choices. We'll notice that this is the one that I had created. And Basically, it's saying the task dot assignment group, right? Because assignment group is on the task table. And then we'll create a time zone on the sys user group table in just a second. So one thing you're probably gonna wanna do is get the time zone choices from somewhere. There are some out of the box ones. So if you type in time zone as your element, and then you can put in a table of like sys user. Sys user will have some probably out of the box um, and then get some values. You'll notice that some of these uh, are, are like floating. Um, you probably are dealing with more um, concrete stuff in your everyday operations, I would think. But that's up to you. You know, you should see guidance if they need to do floating time zones, etc. Don't want to get too into detail about floating time zones versus the concrete ones. But to get to the choices, um, the easiest way I found is to type in e space list. There's our uh, Pacific time zone that we've added to the sys user group table. So, again, if we were to come into e list and we'll type in 
actually I'm just going to clear this filter since I just put this in yesterday we'll notice here we have two options that I've added uh, and there's also a field that we need to add in just a second I'll show you that so here's Pacific here's Eastern and again I've taken these from the out of the box uh, choices that they've had there and just made copies of them by using insert and stay we'll create a dictionary entry on the sys user group table and the reason why we're doing that is because it is referenced on the actual task table. So here's this user group as our table choice. We'll notice that I created as a string and you'll notice that there are a lot of uh, fields that appear to be choices, but they're actually string. So impact, urgency, um, even state. So I just wanted to note that key to it is right here. See this drop down with none? We'll need to have that selected. Otherwise it will appear like a string field. So it will appear like this if you don't have that selected. You'll probably recall I did a video, um, I don't know, maybe two years ago, um, how to make a reference field look like a choice field I did it for Halloween. Um, and then down here, here's where our choices are filtered, right? So those are the two that I uh, just showed you. So now we have all that set up um, and we could even take a look at the group that we're going to use for our experiment in just a second. So I'm using the Aspen group in an incident in just a second and we'll notice I gave it a time zone a US Pacific. I could also give um, you know time zones um, to other groups too if I want to if they're used for incident which that's the table I'm going to use for the demonstration in just a second. And then the, one of the last steps here is going to be inputting this into our out of the box script include, which is called SLA time zone. So in order to get to script include um, th this table, you can type in, I type in PT space include. Um, it'll bring it up under either system definition or system UI. And when you click on it, uh, it'll bring you into just a regular list view, right? And then we'll go back into the SLA time zone. But the real magic happens right here. So lines 22 and 23. And you'll see here that these, these options here, like this case, has to line up with that choice value um, that we did for the list. So if we go back to right here, you'll see that this is the exact same, right? This value is the exact same as what's going on in here. And then we'll notice this task gr dot assignment group dot u time zone um, is occurring. Um, there's a reference, so task gr is referenced up here. It's defined, um, so that's what we're using in this return line here in 23. So now we'll go and demo it. Uh, we'll see here we have a incident. I'll just hit copy, and I'm going to fill in. A user's information we'll notice here this user is located in Amsterdam and then we'll have an assignment group here which we just saw is in US Pacific time zone so now what we'll do is hit save and we can scroll down to the task SLA list associated with this incident and here are the three that we looked at before remember that we had the response one also so it's reflecting the caller's time zone. This one is reflecting the caller's time zone. And then this one here is reflecting the assignment group. Um, this value right here, time zone. So it's dot walking over to here, which is nice. So again, to recap, what did we have to do? Add a time zone source choice to our SLA definition. Then we, um, we modified the out of the box script include. Kind of did this last, sorry, it's out of order added a time zone field to the group table, then we added the choices, and we had to populate it with uh, data. And if we wanna take a look at it in an update set, we're talking about maybe six things went on because this field label of the dictionary, that's basically one update there. A couple of SLA definitions, which you know that's optional if you wanna create SLA definitions to test with to make sure that it's working. Thank you for watching today's video. Make sure to subscribe my name is Jason Miller, founder of Aspen Now Solutions, and we've just unlocked the power of ServiceNow.